مرحبا انا حضرت كنت بال... بالانجليزي نتحاور عن الانجليزي banking is at the heart of any economic development because banking fuels the economic development by transforming savings into investments short term deposits into long term financing banking has the role of intermediary but also the role of allocating resources to the best projects those that can return the capital to its depositors that trust the banks will keep the funds safe and will return them when needed with a premium the interest on the money placed at the core of our activity is trust confidence this is what allows banks to attract funding this is what allows the banking sector to finance the economic development so trust is really our most precious asset and it is this trust that the lebanese have had in the banking sector in lebanon that allowed us to build a case of resilience and seen in any other country where the state fails it is this trust that is being subject to attack lately i would like to show you the active role that our banking sector played in financing our economy and how it can help it grow further to understand its role we need to understand its balance sheet let me summarize it for you our banking sector's total assets have reached 208 billion dollar and represents nearly four times our gdp so our sector is oversized compared to our national economy what it shows its ability to finance a substantial growth our economy has a huge potential untapped it has doubled in size since 2005 it has multiplied by 19 times since the end of the war i believe it can easily double in the in size in the medium term the resources of the banking sectors are mainly the customer deposits which account for nearly 83% of our balance sheet they continue to grow at a significant rate they increased by 7% in 2016 after recording 6% in 2014 and 5% in 2015 deposits reached 172 billion dollar with a dollarization rate of 65%. The other main source of funding is equity. Equity exceeds 18 billion and represents more than 9% of assets. That allows Lebanese banks to show a low leverage compared to international banks with capital adequacy ratio of around 16.5%, which is double what is required by Basel II. Knowing that because of our low rating, the exposure to government is weighted 100% and exposure to the central bank 50% when it consumes 0% of equity in the US or in Europe. It is important to outline that we do not depend on the capital markets to fund the economy, but only on deposits and on shareholders' money. The funding of Lebanese bank is those more stable. We do not have hot money and deposits from non-residents accounts for only 20% of total deposits. Most of the non-residents are Lebanese from the diaspora. On the asset side, we have the use of funds, what we finance. First, the private sector. Loans to the private sector exceeds $58 billion, 110% of GDP. Our loan to deposit ratio is low, 34%, that was said, but we managed to finance the growth of the private sector at a higher level than banks do abroad. In the Arab world, the ratio of loans to GDP is at 61%. In the US, at 81%. In Europe, at 97%. We are at 110%. We cannot say that Lebanese banks do not actively finance the private sector. We've been, in fact, very supportive to the private sectors. Thanks to the many incentives program launched by the central bank that benefited corporates, SMEs, and the public at large. Corporate represents 57% of total lending, SMEs 16%, and retail 
2.5%. We finance trade flows. Look at this slide. Most of the trade flows of Lebanon uh, are financed by banks. This is import plus exports. 15 billion over 22 billion dollars. We finance trade flows, offer treasury and hedging solutions, wealth management services, and investment banking, including issuance of bonds and market making the sovereign euro bonds. We've been at the forefront of financial inclusion with the launch of prepaid cards and microcredits. We offer all type of loans and have a wide range, wide coverage of the Lebanese territory through the extensive ATM and branch networks. More than 126,000 Lebanese were able to become homeowners with loans up to 30 years at a very affordable rate of 5.4%, which is below the cost of funds in Lebanese pound. In a nutshell, we cater to all the needs of a developed economy. Our second biggest borrower is the public sector. We finance directly the Lebanese government with an exposure of $34 billion as of end of August. It uh, represents 19% of deposits. However, in foreign currency, our direct exposure is of $16 billion, so less than the total equity of the sector. The remaining assets are mainly the liquidity that we place with our central bank and our correspondent banks abroad. With the correspondent banks, we keep a high liquidity in foreign currency of $12 billion. This represents 10% of deposits in foreign currency. With the central bank, this is our high exposure. Uh, it received $90 billion from bank. We hear that Lebanese banks make a lot of money. First, the return of equity is around 11%. It is low compared to our peers in the Middle East, where when we should get a higher rate of return for the risks we take. We have to understand that what the shareholders get is around 4% of dividend yield, which is lower than interest served on a one-year deposit. The rest of profits are capitalized. They are reinvested in the banks in order to be able to grow the financing to the private and public center. So contrary to all other businesses that have made money in Lebanon, Lebanese banks continue to reinvest their profits to the benefit of the Lebanese economy. Every $1 million reinvested allowed to lend nearly $7 million. That has a multiple effect. And one thing that was not explained was the big, the big swap, the financial engineering of 2016. It has saved 20 to $25 billion of financing capabilities to the economy. I would like to show you three graphs quickly that outline the resilience of our, of our banking sector. Look at the gross of deposits since Paris II. Despite all the events and challenges, it is staggering. Look at the build-up in equity in Lebanese banks since the end of the war. I don't think any other, any other sector would have invested so much in the country. And look at the build-up of reserves at the central bank since the assassination of Prime Minister Hariri. This resilience allows us to look forward and continue to play an active role in financing the growth of our country. We see three areas of growth for the future. The oil and gas sector, the knowledge economy, public-private partnerships. The oil and gas sector represent a huge potential opportunity, potential, for Lebanon and its banking sector. It is probably still early to assess this potential. The bids were just announced. We will have to wait for the exploration phase to discover the potential of our resources. However, the winning companies should base their companies and managers in Lebanon, get apartments and offices, hire staff, subcontract many services. Companies will set up in Lebanon and will invest to cater for this new industry. This will launch a process of investments and should benefit the Lebanese economy, and it will be an opportunity for banks to step in and finance a whole new sector. 
Two, the knowledge economy. This is a very promising area of growth for our economy. BDL took the initiative to develop the entrepreneurial sector, to create jobs, and keep the human capital in Lebanon. Circular 331 allows banks to invest 4% of their equity in startups or venture capital firms with a 75% guarantee by central bank, which in return takes 50% of profits. Total amount today is $700 million of capacity of investment. $250 million were already committed by banks to date. In 2015, we ranked second in the region after the UAE in startup investments. We have started to see a positive effect. We are witnessing the return of Lebanese brains back to Lebanon to benefit from the circular. Lebanon has a different positioning from Dubai. Lebanon is an innovation hub. Dubai is more a sales hub with a business expansion platform. Pl many players are replicating US models, Karim, Talabat, Souk.com. Significant economic growth is expected from the digital sector. It is estimated that we can add 1.5% in GDP growth in five years. The banks will have contributed by injecting capital in the sector and finance the growth of the companies when they start to be bankable. Finally, and most importantly, public-private partnership. This is, in my view, the real opportunity for the country to reform the state and invest in the much needed infrastructure while not burdening the state with more debt, increasing effectiveness, and improving public services to the citizens. It is undoubtedly an opportunity for banks to deploy the financing, their financing capabilities. The only way to attract substantial investment to Lebanon is to privatize public services or entering into public-private partnerships. The law that was recently enacted has put in place a transparent framework. Banks will be ready to help advise investors, raise funding, and finance projects. But to succeed, it is essential to protect the investors. We should not see again a BOT project revoked by the government. Legal guarantee is essential. Tenor of the concessions are also essential. In order to give time to the investment to repay the substantial amounts invested and to pay off. The structure of the transaction will be key to secure the proper financing. Secured access to the cash flows are the best guarantee for a bank's financing. A few years ago, a PPP project was put in place where the private company was investing and collecting money on behalf of a public service. But instead of getting the cash flow upfront, the private company had to pay the public company and wait to be repaid. This type of structure does not comfort a banking partner. It is best practiced to get the cash flows in a special account to pay the expenses of the project and the service of the debt, and then release the remaining cash according to the agreement. I really believe in this opportunity and its potential to transform our country. Our banking sector has the means to finance it. We have currently around $14 billion of financing capacity, taking into account the new capital ad adequacy requirement of the central bank, which is 15%. Over the next three years, it should grow to nearly $20 billion. And if our BDL governor decides to reduce the capital requirements to the minimum required internationally for systemic banks, which we are not at the global level, but we are in Lebanon, we could free immediately, immediately $85 billion in financing capacity. In a word, our biggest constraint will be equity. This is why it, it is important to generate enough profits to increase our equity base and also be able to attract investors. This is for the good of the Lebanese states and of the Lebanese citizens. Thank you.